be an asshole, they say. Treat them mean to keep them keen, they say. If you want that girl, just be nasty. If you want that guy, play hard to get. What the fuck are all these games about? Why are we like this? In relationship, in monogamous relationships or non-monogamous relationships, in sexual intimacy, in romantic partnerships, why are we told often the advice that we get, the dating advice we get is to be an asshole or be mean? Be mean to have them being keen. Why? There's some truth to this, but before I unpack that, and that may shock some of you, before I unpack that, Let's go somewhere else. Why do people give this advice? They give this advice because they are insecure. They are hyper selfish, they are wounded themselves, and they have unresolved issues. And so one of the ways that they get the girl, or get the guy, or be mean, or be an asshole, or be elusive in nature, not mysterious, because there's a difference, but purposely play hard to get, play these games, is because they are scared themselves. They are hurt themselves. Their ego is fragile. But it's not just a vanity thing or an ego thing. It is a legitimately I am hurt thing and how I protect myself is to keep people at bay, to keep people at distance, to wear masks, to not be my authentic self, to not be real with who I am, but rather to show up in a way that is based on false pretense. You see, if I'm wearing masks, if I'm harsh in my exterior, then it's going to be more difficult for me to be hurt. And these are the ways that people protect themselves. Now some people hide from the world. Some people are meek and very shy and don't put themselves out there, don't take risks, etc. That's one protective strategy of many, to protect our egos, our wounded selves. The experiences that we've had as children, where we've been hurt, where we've experienced pain and suffering, and we don't know how to deal with it. So we develop often a harsh exterior. And when it comes to relating, when it comes to intimacy, well, we want to be intimate. It's part of our drive. It's part of the bonding drive or the bonding mechanism that we have that's inbuilt within us, as is fertilization-driven sex. The thing is, fertilization-driven sex, that's really powerful. And so we move around the world and we go through life wanting to be intimate with people. We want to be seen, want to be understood, want to be heard, appreciated, respected, accepted. And we actually truly do want to reciprocate that because that bonding builds intimacy and connection and tribe and inclusivity and you're in the in-group. And being in the in-group to the nervous system, to the brain, to the entire being is safer than being in the out-group. One of the ways to be in the in-group, well, yes, you can be dominant, you can be oppressive, that's one way. But we're also cooperative beings. And we have found over the years that being in cooperation with each other gets us a little further. So we have these, these biological unconscious drivers, right? But this be mean to treat them keen, this be an asshole attitude, that can also actually be attractive. Why? But when I say attractive, people get frustrated with it. However, their actions gravitate towards Have you ever found that you've been dating someone and they're being elusive and they're inconsistent in their behavior and one day they'll text you and they won't text you for four days and they don't get back to you when you respond and you have an excitement but you're not feeling that from them and they're quite bland in the way they're communicating with you and they're saying they want to do something but their actions aren't matching their words yet that frustrates you but you're still there you're not honoring that you see these people feed into that quote-unquote victim uh, that weakness, that victim mentality. And that's a wound that maybe you haven't healed within yourself, that you need to be seen, that you want to people please, that you want to contort yourself in order to make someone else happy. Or you have an idea in your head that you have to impress someone or have them see you in order to feel validated and to feel worthy. So this be an asshole is a cyclical thing. It's not just the person being an asshole, the person being mean that is part of this equation. The person that is uh, being meaned against, is, <laughs> the person that's experiencing that meanness or that asshole attitude, they're part of it too. So when people say be an asshole, there's some truth to that. I want to come back to this. And we get it wrong out of fear. Let me let me elaborate what that on what that means. 
We say, let me just come back to something. Let's say it in a different way. We say be an asshole to protect ourselves because we're scared of being hurt ourselves. And over the years, we developed this pattern, this system, a way of being in the world, this armor that we wear, these masks that we wear that actually protect us and quote unquote, keep us safe because we all want to feel safe. And we found keeping people at a distance and controlling the situation and manipulating the situation and sometimes being uh, the aggressor or being oppressive in the situation, it works for us. It helps us feel safe. The issue is that we're never feeling fully fulfilled. And what people are saying, the healthy expression of what people are saying when they're saying be an asshole in relationship is they're saying just be you and don't be attached. Don't be attached to an outcome. Don't be fake. Don't care less about appearance and what other people think. Be real in your demeanor. Be, be authentic. Be empowered. Be in integrity. Your words, let them match your actions. Your actions, let them match your words. Don't appease and don't compromise yourself. Value who you are and know who you are. Now, sometimes that can appear to be you being an asshole. The healthy expression of that saying, be an asshole to get the girl or get the guy, whatever whatever you want to have, you want to frame it. The, the truth in that is if you be you, not be purposely mean. Don't set an intention or carry an intention to hurt someone else or be sinister against someone else or willfully want to be malicious against someone else. If you're doing that, then you are being an asshole. But if you set the intention that I'm just going to be me, and I'm not going to be abrasive, I'm going to be compassionate, I'm going to have an open heart, but I'm going to stand in my power and my truth. And I'm going to be honoring that. I'm going to make self-honoring choices. You may upset people because you won't be appeasing people. That means people in your circle of influence, whether you're dating, whether you're in a longer term relationship, they may be disheartened by that. They may take that personally. And it may appear that you're being an asshole. But if you stay true to who you really are, if your intention is one of wanting to simply express your truth without directly wanting to hurt the other person or intentionally wanting to be malicious towards the other person, then yeah, you may be or you may appear to be an asshole, but you cannot control, nor should you want to control what's outside of your control. In other words, how people respond to you, how people react to you, how people see you, perceive you and feel about you. Intention plays a big part in how we show up. And the how of how we show up plays a big part as well. And in intimate relationships, we can often be really triggered. It can be painful. We're pushed against our edges. Our relationships are mirrors for us to see what we cannot see ourselves. They shine a light on the dark parts of who we are. And that can be confronting sometimes. And when we are unapologetically ourselves, when we're authentically ourselves and we know ourselves and we trust who we are, that's often a big energy in the world. And that can be very daunting for other people. And what can appear to be you being an asshole can be one of two things. You actually being an asshole because you are scared, you're in fear, you're protecting your wounds, that you're unhealed, you're in your shadow. Or what it may be is you stepping in, living in your truth, and people aren't able to hold that. And so the next logical thing, the next heart-based thing to do is to step into a place and an environment where people can see you where you surround yourself with like-minded and like-hearted people. People where you can reciprocate trust, respect, reverence. When you, when, when you can have that reciprocated and it's mutual, it's a mutual exchange of that love, respect, trust, adoration, reverence being shared, then you being an asshole isn't you being an asshole. And so yeah, there's truth to pretty much everything that we experience in the world at some level, right? You just need to ask yourself, what type of relationship do you want? First and foremost, with you, because that's the most important type of or kind of relationship. And secondly, what type of relationship do you want to form with others? And how do you want to be seen? And importantly, how do you want to see others? That's a really important place to be. Power and blessings to you. I'll see you soon. Oh, one more thing. If you're stuck in love, if you keep being, if you're on repeat in the same relationships, but the same type of relationships, but different, different set of hair, different face, different set of hair, different person, then take the love block assessment. I think it will be quite revealing for you and show you where some of those deep fears are that are stopping you from receiving exactly what you need.